John chapter 2. In the third day, there was a marriage of Cana. Now, there are two Canas. This one is the second. It's in Ephraim. Joshua, I think that says 16.9. I made notes in my Bible. I can't read them no more. And the mother of Jesus was there. Isn't that interesting? The Bible, the Holy Spirit, the Gospel of John, written by the beloved Apostle John, doesn't even mention her name. <gasps> Isn't that interesting? You know why? Because the Holy Spirit knew that she would be worshipped one day. And even she mentioned it when she had her little prophecy in Luke chapter 1. There will be people that call me blessed. So God, the Holy Spirit, now, listen, I'm not putting Mary down, okay? She was a wonderful woman that God chose. Of all the women in Israel, chose her. But the Bible does not make any big deal of Mary. And a lot of times, woman. Now, Mary, in the Catholic Church, is Isis and Aphrodite. She just changes her name, just like the Pope's. Both Jesus was called, so he was invited, invitation, and his disciples to the marriage. So, here's a family affair going to a marriage, going to a wedding. And when they wanted wine, kind of interesting, here's a feast, and you're in Israel, and it's grapes and wine, and they ran out or had none the mother of jesus said unto her the mother of jesus again no mary they have no wine no satisfaction no satisfaction jesus said unto her blessed mary the fruit of the loom oh mother the grapes of red i mean no oh mother i'll do what you say Jesus said to her, woman, <laughs> let's read this in the Catholic Church. Woman, what have I to do with thee? Now watch this. My hour is not yet come. What was the substance at the Last Supper? Wine. Wine. So he's already, from John chapter 2, he's already prophesying of his death and the blood atonement. They have no wine. Woman, it's not my time. Oh, you mean something to drink. His mother says unto the servants, now watch this, whatsoever he, Jesus, saith unto you, do it. So there's a track called Mary's Commandment to Catholics. You do what Jesus tells you to do, not what I tell you to do. Amen. By the way, this is the last words of Mary ever recorded. Thought, Actually, yeah, you know, I'm just saying, yeah, she's recorded earlier, so that's a she, that's a bad note she I learned. When they're, yeah. They can't get in the room. So that's a note they someone want, told me that's wrong. Take that note out. They want to talk to her. Your mother and brother wish to talk to you. Well, the last words of Mary, but then she, somewhere else she says, "I." No, that was when he was thirteen. This may be the last words of Mary. I mean, her words personally. I can't think where else she speaks. He speaks to her on the cross. He spe she doesn't say nothing. He, says, he speaks to John. Behold, so this may be the last words. Yeah, and there were set there six water pots of stone. What day was Jesus born? And yet, at this wedding, we know that there were six water pots of stone. Might have been today. No, no, the same. It's just interesting how the Holy Spirit will tell us that there are six water pots of stone. Like, who cares? And you know what? That means something over the birth of Jesus Christ, the day he was born. What? I have no idea. But we're talking about wine and we're talking about water. You got to have the wine before you get the water for salvation. How's that one? 
after the manner of the purifying the Jews, you know, unless they wash their hands and they wash their feet. But these weren't water pots. I don't think you, you would you would drink from them. They were for cleaning, purifying. I don't understand the Jewish ritual. Contained two or three firkins of peat. Now, come on. Six water pots. This is how much they contain it all. And I don't know the birthday of Jesus Christ. And you didn't call her Mary. God's priorities are not our priorities. What's that mean? That means something. What? I don't know. Then says Jesus. Then Jesus said to fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said, "Fill them," and they filled them as full as they could get them. How's that? How's that for obedience to Jesus Christ? They didn't half fill it. They didn't, you know, leave a little bottle. They filled it to the brim. You have to say they had faith that he was going to actually turn it into one. No, he just he, Jesus said, "Do it," without any understanding. Why can't we do that? Why can't we do what Jesus said to do, and then go for the brim? Why can't we give Jesus the fullest of service? And these people are not even saved. And if they're servants, they may not even be Jews. It could be. I mean, you, they had Jewish servants and they also had Gentile servants. And if this is the manner of washing, if it had anything to do with the temple, it could be those class of people that came to Joshua and said, you know, we got the moldy bread, we got the old shoes, remember them? And he says on them, draw out now. That's kind of funny because if you were to draw out now, if it's filled to the bim, some are going to spill over. Have you spilled over? Is your cup overflowing? Are you filled with the Holy Ghost? Are you filled with the blood of Jesus Christ? Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. Man, they are, they are doing what he said. Now, if this was liquor, this would be a violation of the law. And then I challenge you, we got a couple more verses. I challenge you just tell me where Jesus is said to drink it. Let's read on. I've said that before. I dealt with a drunk one. Oh, Jesus made water to wine, but find me where he drank it. And then it did not have time to ferment. Because yeast and leaven are a violation of law except for one sacrifice. That would not have been thrown into this pot by Jesus. That would have been a violation of law. He said, draw it out now and bear it to the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, he had no idea. The servants know what's going on. They pour out to all the people and went, wow. Woohoo. This is good stuff. I don't mean who hoo as in drunk, but mm, tasty. But the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And said to them, Every man at the beginning does set forth the good wine. I'm trying to find a note. Can't read that. New wine, Luke 5 36, Isaiah 65 8. And when, he, and when men had well drunk, intoxicated, 1 Samuel 1, 9, when they, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine unto now, satisfaction now. Listen, when you throw a party, they're saying, man, you bring out the great stuff, but as everyone gets drunk, you bring the water down to, you know, the, the nickel bottle junk. Man, you have saved the best wine on, for the last. That best wine was made by the Creator. It was watered down drink, if you want to call it that. And had no time to ferment, and Jesus never drank it, as far as we are reading. The beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. So we have here. Outside the disciples, outside Jesus' family, we have an entire wedding party. That would be a lot of people, you assume, right? Including the servants. 
that saw and tasted this first miracle of Jesus. Jesus was no prophet that did anything in the secret. Now don't tell me that this story did not go all around the Middle East. There was his wedding. Wait a minute. In 2016, we just read about that wedding again. How many times have John chapter 2 been read in the, since John has written the gospel? The story's gone worldwide, hasn't it? Just in the Bible that we owe. Never mind without the Bible. That Jesus is able to make wine, new wine, from water. Oh, men could do it with chemicals, but is it really safe? There's a scientist, I, I, this is a preacher story, I don't know if it's true. You know, he did this in the classroom, but the problem is he used chemicals that would kill you. And the student raised his hand and said, okay, now drink it. Oh, I can't drink it. Could, and according to the story, is well, Jesus, they drank his wine, why can't we drink yours? I guess you would say this would be, uh, that wine that man makes would be a cult Kool-Aid. Verse 11 that you taught us a while back. It was 450 years since the last miracle that was Daniel in the lion's den. That would be true, too. Go through the positive. All the prophets after Daniel, man, they're, they're, they're preaching this, and you're in the curse. You're under a curse. Only a miracle other than that is them going back to the land of Israel, and that's it. The beginning of the miracles did Jesus in Cain of Galilee manifest forth his glory. His disciples believed on him. Oh, so, so it, took, it took that for the disciples. Oh, this is truly the Messiah. Chapter 1, they really weren't sure. Remember they called him rabbi. We're, we're not sure. We've heard the word at this wedding. Wow. This miracle that drunks will use that I can drink alcohol. Made everybody say, whoa, what just happened here? And according to Corinthians by Paul, Jews require a sign. What is the first sign that Jesus does for the Jews? Openly. Turn the water into wine. You know what one of the signs Moses did to the children of Israel? He turned the water into blood. Uh-oh, you think that has a sufficient? Yeah. I think, oh. And he tells his mother, my time has not come. So you get somebody who's drinking alcohol, wine, as a, as an as an alcoholic drink. There's some countries that's all you can drink. I understand that. Okay, I'm not talking about a regular drink that that's all you can drink. But if you're drinking for alcohol, alcohol entertainment purposes and all that, then you ask, have you ever taken blood to your lips? Oh no 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 no. Yes you have, according to the Bible. Do you know what one religion out there who professes to drink? their mass you know what they profess by a magic show what that is they profess to be literal literal it's in their catechism it's in their priest the pope will tell you that is the literal blood of jesus christ that's man-made wine this is god-made wine it's not hooch and it's not blood but it's a type of blood so look Remember, was it Luke we read? They were looking for Moses. No, chapter 1. They were looking for Moses or Elias. Here comes Moses. He did his first sign. What is it? Water into something. Here, wine. Moses did it to blood. The wine is a type of blood of Jesus. Look what, look what Jesus did. Here comes Moses. That's a very important fact to get. It's not just so I can drink wine. I can get drunk. It's the blood of Jesus Christ, the sign of Moses that prophet liken unto that prophet so jesus is now following the footsteps of moses in the beginning of miracles did jesus in Cana of galilee and manifest forth his glory and his disciples believed on him again here's that note i have last miracle from daniel 6 besides them going back into the land and this he went down to capernaum down by the sea coast he and his mother and his brethren, okay, his brethren, that's the disciples, and disciples, uh-oh, uh-oh, brethren and disciples are two different things by that column. Well, that's not true. 
So they'll go over to Titus and say the blessed God and the blessed Jesus Christ. Well, see, that's God and Jesus. Yeah, okay. And they continue there not many days. What's not many days? Not many days. And the Jews pass over, what, first one after his ministry. Start marking the Passovers in John's Gospel. This is the first one. Jesus will have three and a half Passovers. He will be the fourth. And the Jews' Passover was at hand. And Jesus went up. What's wrong with that? Jerusalem's a mountain. See, they'll say, see, he's in Capernaum. That's northwest. That's northwest. So he would be going down to Jerusalem. No, Jerusalem is a mountain. He's going up. You know how I know Jesus wasn't fat or lazy? He did a lot of walking. Him and his disciples. Everywhere they went, they walked. Only once did I ever read that he got on an animal. He got in boats. I never read about getting on an animal. I think people are going to be quite shocked when they find who Jesus really is. I think he's going to be muscular. And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves, a convenience store. Wouldn't you think they charge high prices? Here, come get what you need. Here's your first convenience store found in the Bible. Don't bring your oxen and sheep and doves. Sell it like the Bible says. Put put the money in your fist. Head to Jerusalem. And we'll be so glad to sell it here. Probably outrageous prices. According to Jesus. And changers of money sitting. Now there was Jewish money. Temple money. And there was Roman money. And you sure could not pay the temple tax with Roman money. So they would have you exchange the money. And they would cheat you of the money. At an exchange rate. How's that? And guess who was in charge of all that? The priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. So now the next question before we move to 15 be, what would Jesus do? And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he takes a whole bunch of ropes. He drove them out of the temple. You remember the last time God did driving? He drove Adam and Eve out of the garden. He's driving them out. What would you say he drive? I'd say he drive a Honda Accord. They're always Honda Accords always show up in the Book of Acts. And he drove them out. Poor Stephen is run over by an Accord, according to Acts. Let me uh, uh, read the Bible. He drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the table. Jesus making a ruckus in church. What's it say? Those oxen, sheep, and doves were needed for the sacrifice, but they were make they were making money. They were they were thieves. They were profiteering in the temple said and found in the temple you got animal waste i talked about this before you got animal waste dropping in the temple where it's supposed to be holy and the old testament law says you were to bury that when it came from a man the only animals that were to be in that court or were the ones that were supposed to be at the brazen altar everybody else was to wait outside that curtain that gate remember so Jesus in all power of God on that goes in there and makes a ruckus. And man, there's coins falling all the place. There's animals, there's feathers, there's people scrawling on the ground. They're trying to get out. What a ruckus. And said unto them that sold doves, man, points the doves right out. You know, why would he point the ones that sold the doves? Not the oxen or sheep. Why would he single them out? Because remember, if a poor man could not afford the oxen sheep, his mother would have to get doves because they were unable to buy the sheep, even though the sheep wasn't her. So when he attacks these people that doves, he is attacking that. You know what? You're taking advantage of the poor people. Scripture with scripture. Take these things hence. Now, he just, the modern liberal Jesus. 
take these things from hence, will you, my friend? I just love you so much. I doubt it. I, I can just imagine Jesus. Take these things hence from my father's house and the house of merchandise. That's a Jesus people don't want. How dare you yell at me, Jesus? Judge not least, you be judged. What well, wait a minute? You can't judge Jesus. He's sinless. Pilate tried that. Take these things hence. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Boom, there it is. Plain and simple. So if you call your church God's house, and you got a table of selling things, what would Jesus do? He'd come over and kick you down. And you know what the church would probably do? Kick him out. So he's standing at the door. Anybody want to come out of that mess? Am I wrong or is Revelation 3 right? He's not even going to go in. Listen, this is a temple. This is God's house. As far as the church building, Jesus, I'm just standing outside. I'm not even going to go in it. How's that? Difference between the temple and the church house. I won't even go in it. I'll just stand outside and knock. That's why I say Jesus outside the door knocking, Satan's in the front row, amen, and the preacher. You do know Satan has preachers. You do have read your Bible. And his disciples remembered that it was written. Now remember, John's the last gospel to be written, and John is an apostle. And he, when everything was happening, after the resurrection, after he rebuked them in that upper room, after all things... Oh man, yeah, we remember that was in the some somewhere they heard the scriptures of this happening. Yeah, I remember that. The zeal of thine house has eaten me up. That's Psalm 69 9. Then answered the Jews, then answered the Jews and said unto him, as he just made this hocus pocus ruckus going on, what sign? Shows thou unto us, seeing thou doest these, what things? The money's rolling on the floor, the animals are all run away, the people are battered, they're, they're grabbing what they can, they're rushing. It's a ruckus at the time. Give us a sign to, to prove what you just did, Jesus. I'll tell you what sign. You want me for the sign? John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. That's a sign. That was, a, that was a written testimony of John the Baptist. Jesus answered, said unto them, Ooh. Destroy this temple. Now this is the same thing with Peter upon this rock. All right? I know you can't see this in audio land, but in video land you can see it. Upon this temple. Upon this rock. And the Bible is going to explain itself. Upon destroy this temple, and three days I will raise it up. Oh, we just had the blood to his mother. Now we got the resurrection to the Pharisees. Blood and resurrection. I'll raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. Wilt thou rear it up in three days? Solomon took seven years. 1 Kings 6.38 Took him quite a bit of a long time to build that temple. Alright, here's a side note. But he spank of the temple of his body. This temple? Talk about my body. You're going to put it in the grave? It'll come up in three days. He's not here. He's risen. So why would you go run over there with, with Peter upon this rock and say that's Peter when the Bible's already told you when he says this, he's talking about himself. Scripture with Scripture. No problems. And this is one of the things they'll use at his trial before the Sanhedrin. Oh, well, he said raise up. Yeah, he, he did say that, right? He did say it. But he wasn't talking about the temple. And how dare, you know, the, the Sadducee, how dare you speak up against that? beautiful temple they're idle. they're idle even the even the disciples want that jesus don't you just see all the glorious stuff and it's like phew yeah okay now another side note when therefore he was risen from the dead 
his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. Okay, so let's look at this now. He died according to the scriptures. He was buried and arose from the rose from the dead according to the scriptures. What would be according to those scriptures? Is what he told the, the disciples, the apostles. So there you go. Jesus' word, John 1.1, 1, 1, is God's word. It's prophecy. It's been fulfilled. Now, Gene Dixon, no Saddamas couldn't do anything about prophesying in their own life. I can just imagine those prophets there dying without preparing to have a grave, a coffin, and all. Because, I mean, if you're going to know when you're going to die, prepare. You know what I'm saying? Put on that tombstone the day you're going to die before you die. Then I'll believe you. It's nothing more to me. We have one down here in Daytona. A psychic shop that's closed up. And I just want to laugh because you didn't see that coming? So I'll pop my head in at the place where they got read your palm. I'll pop my head. Did you know I was coming? Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the feast day, many believed in his name. Actually, there is no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. When he when they saw the miracles which he did. So he's doing miracles here at the temple, and John has told us, if I could write it all down. You don't want to carry that to church. Volumes could not be contained in the world. So John has written to he's in the temple. He's doing miracles. And the people are believing on his name. And I, I can't even record them all. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. He knew what they were going to do. He knew two and a half more years they're going to cry crucify him. He knows who the phonies are. He knows who really believes. He knows who Judas is. Yet that didn't change his opinion. And Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. Jeremiah 17, 9, 20, 12. And need not that any should testify of man. For he knew what was in man because now he is man. Now he's God in the flesh. He knows those Pharisees that just crashed. He knows the trouble he's going to give. Man, this is the first year his This is the first Passover his ministry. And he's got two and a half more. And he knows. Guess what? He knows Satan's there. And he knows Satan's using the men. He's not going to get a good time. He's not going to have happy days. He knows what these people are going to do to him. This is only the beginning. So, I mean, if you think, I mean, if a television preacher says, oh, everything's going to be hunky-dory, what do you explain the life of Jesus? Show me one good time. Show me where it says he smiled. Show me where it says he laughed. Show me where he was happy. Show me where he had a thousand bucks by giving God ten. <laughs> Like I said, except for coming into Jerusalem, I don't ever read him riding any animal. Jesus' life, and no dishonor to God because Jesus is God, but the life of Jesus that we're going to study in John, which we studied in the three Gospels already, would put a television preacher and, and name it, claim it, would put it to garbage. When Jesus died, he had no clothes. It was gambled off. It was parted. When they put him in that tomb, it wasn't even his tomb. The women and the men had to dress him for death. He didn't need a well in the last testament. There was nothing to do. And he didn't have his 11 apostles or disciples there with him. John took Mary home. So it says. How about us Christians? 
Are we willing to give to the Lord filling, not just to be filled, but filled to the brim? That when he takes a vessel to, to, to pull out, it overflows. I'm not like that. I'm not like that at all. We, when we go through John and we read about Jesus, he's already he's despised for doing right. It was proper to clean out that temple and he gets rebuked. He gets challenged. And we're only two chapters. John is one of the greatest gospels. And as I said, I'm going to take seriously, but we're also going to attack religions. 